This is my biggest aquarium. It is eight feet long by four feet wide by four feet deep. And it is about 880 gallons. This is the most appropriate aquarium I've had for monster fish. And many of you guys say that this is the best opportunity for me to keep an arowana. I couldn't agree more. However, I can no longer keep the arowana as a pet. And in this video, I wanna explain why. I personally believe that arowana are not meant for most aquariums. And to understand this, we gotta go back to the beginning of my arowana experience. So it was 2013 when I bought my first monster aquarium. I was young, I was just out of high school, and to me, a 125 gallon aquarium was huge. So I bought my 125 and I bought a bunch of fish that I believe to be monster fish, including a baby arowana. The growth of that baby arowana was absolutely amazing. It was double the size in one month. Um, for me, it was just a great experience before I was used to keeping mostly cichlids. And this was my first non-cichlid um, monster fish. And it definitely was an amazing experience. So I was documenting the growth of this fish on my YouTube channel. And one day, once it reached about 8 inches, it jumped out. Now, if you check out some of my earlier YouTube videos, you can see a lot of footage of this arowana but you won't see anywhere where I mention how he jumped out and that's because I felt embarrassed. A lot of people told me that these fish do jump and that I need a very secure hood. Even though I did have a nice canopy on this aquarium, it still jumped and I was embarrassed. So I didn't mention it to you guys in my videos. Instead, I went out and I bought another one and it just kept going where I left off. The replacement arowana did extremely well. It caught up in size in no time and just continued to grow and it definitely was a continuous awesome experience. The only thing was this fish grew a lot more faster than I anticipated at that time. So in no time I had to upgrade from home from my 125 into a brand new 210 gallon aquarium only to find out that months later he would soon outgrow my 210 gallon aquarium. At that time I couldn't afford a larger aquarium so I ended up giving away that two and a half foot arowana to someone on Craigslist. Fast forward three years later, and I wanted to try keeping an arowana again. This time I did a little bit more research and I came across the Giardini arowana. Now this is a fish coming from Australia and they don't get quite as large as the silver arowana. So I thought that it would be a good fit inside of my 210 gallon aquarium. I bought this fish and I have a nice video showing a growth rate of this fish from two inches to about nine inches. And once he was big enough, I put him inside of my 210 gallon aquarium, which at the time house several Central and South American cichlids. Now this fish was absolutely beautiful. He was just starting to get his gold coloration and I made sure that my 210 was arowana proof. This tank has a great canopy and really no fish can escape. However, I came on one day and I noticed he was missing and this arowana escaped. Now if you look at my 210, if you look at the canopy, the only way he could have escaped was through the tiny little opening which is for my plumbing or my FX6, my Fluvu FX6 is a tiny little square about four inches by four inches. And this nine inch arowana managed to, first of all, see it from the water, dive through it, and land in the back of the tank. And the way the tank is built, I couldn't retrieve his body. So his crust and his skeleton is still behind the tank these years later. I think one of my biggest problems when it came to fish keeping was that I watched way too much YouTube. I just watched so many different aquariums, so many different fish on YouTube, and it just made me so hungry for fish, so crazy, that I just couldn't get enough. So two years later, at that experience with the Giardini Arowana, once again, I bought me a silver arowana. This time, I had a lot more knowledge, a lot more experience with fish, and I was already planning to buy my 350 gallon acrylic aquarium. So I started growing out this arowana, and this had to be the best experience I've had with the arowana. Like I said, because at this point, I had a lot more experience with aquarium fish in general. So this guy grew nicely, he grew very fast, and overall, he was looking extremely healthy until one day. Okay everyone, so I just came home for work and I made this discovery. I know I don't sound angry, but I'm definitely very frustrated. I'm just trying to take it as easy or as best as possible because right now I want to break stuff. Um, but yeah, I came home and one of the first things I do when I come home is I come to the fish room to feed my fish. I'm checking out my 350 gallon aquarium, which is my favorite tank. You know, my eyes always go to this tank first. And right away, within the first few seconds of viewing the tank, I noticed something was wrong. The biggest fish, the most active fish in the tank was missing. 
This fish doesn't hide, this fish doesn't stop moving, and that was my silver arowana. So I knew that he wasn't somewhere hiding, I knew that he wasn't like in an aquarium, I knew he was out the tank. But the thing is, I couldn't find him outside the tank, I checked all around the tank, um, and the search lasted for a half an hour, checking everywhere. This tank does have hoods, let me give you guys a better look at that. Um, this acrylic tank has nice hoods, lids rather, that cover the top of the tank, four different lids, and the only opening is back here. So right here, you can see, is a two inch opening, two inches. But you know, this arowana isn't a small fish. He's about maybe, I'd say he's about 20, 21 inches long. And when you look at his width, the widest part of his back is about two inches wide. So I can't really imagine how this fish being two inches wide was able to squeeze out of a two inch gap. So yeah, this 18 inch fish managed to squeeze through a two inch gap in my 350 gallon aquarium. Was at that point, I told myself, I'm just not lucky with these arowana fish. I have bad luck with arowana, and because of that, I'm never gonna keep an arowana again. Now, while I do believe it is possible for somebody to have bad luck with a certain type of fish, I wanted a little bit more explanation as to why my arowana keep jumping out. Now, I only had three jump out, but for me, three is more than enough. So, take a look at my 210. This tank has a very secure canopy, and I haven't had any other fish jump out of this aquarium, and this tank has had hundreds of fish pass through it in the time of its being set up. The only opening on this aquarium is for my plumbing, for my filtration, and the plumbing isn't even a great hole. It's four inches by four inches, and it has a hole going through it. So it's a very tight gap, and yet my nine inch Jardini Arowana managed to squeeze through. Look at my 350. This tank is eight feet long. The only opening is in the back, which are these little slits that are meant for filtration. The slits are like eight inches by two inches wide, and the 18 inch Arowana managed to squeeze through, get behind the tank and die. How? Now I've had my 350 gallon aquarium now for two years and I've had my 210 gallon aquarium for about six years and in these aquariums the only fish to ever jump out were my arowana. Why is this? To understand this you have to understand the arowana itself. So I did some more research on this fish, on the behavior of this fish in the wild and when you understand this fish you actually understand how it makes perfect sense for these guys to be the only fish able to jump out of such aquariums. So there are four main types of arowana that are found in the U.S. Of course you have your Asian arowanas, but in the U.S. we don't really get to partake in these fish. So the four main arowana in the U.S. are the black arowana, which really isn't that popular, but is very similar to the silver arowana. The silver arowana, which is the most popular, I believe. The Jardini arowana, which comes from Australia. And then you have another one that comes from Australia. I forgot the name of it, but that one is the least common out of all American arowana. One thing that all these arowana have in common is that these are predatory fish and they mostly hunt above the water. You have a lot of fish that like to hunt other fish. Arowana are different. They like to hunt above the water. They like to hunt bugs, insects, and everything that is above. In fact, in South America, they actually call the silver arowana the water monkey because these fish could jump four feet out the water, grab a bug out the tree, and land back in the water perfectly. Do you know how much precision it takes to jump out of the water and grab a bug? First of all, when you're in the water, everything is kind of like off a little bit. It's not really a perfect lineup. It's kind of off. You know what I mean if you're a swimmer. On top of that, you have to measure where the bug is. You have to measure how much energy to put into your jump. And basically what I'm trying to say is these fish have a great view of the outside world. They can see very good when it comes to what's happening above the aquarium. The arowana in my tank, they circle this aquarium non-stop. These are some fish that don't stop moving. They swim around, and what I did know is that they're paying very close attention to what's happening above the tank. They notice the opening, these guys pay a lot of attention. For some reason, they didn't want to be in the aquarium, maybe because it was too small, maybe because it was their tank mates, even though both of the fish were not really harassed too much. But regardless of the situation, they noticed an opening and they went for it. These fish could see very well the outside world. They could see very well what's happening above the aquarium. They saw the opening and they jumped. Most of my fish don't do this because they don't see above as well as the arowana. So the reason why arowana jump out of my aquariums is because they see an opening. Now this still really isn't that comforting to know, but at least I know 
why they jump out and why no other fish jump out. They jump out because they're the only ones able to see that perfect opening. They're the only ones able to measure out that jump and make sure that it is accurate. And that is the reason why I no longer keep arowana. Because these guys are very precise. These guys are accurate when it comes to jumping. These guys are escape artists. And even though my 880 is a large aquarium, even though it is very fit for an arowana, these guys have a lot of options to jump. I like to leave a few gaps for my plants to grow up and for me to just have easy access when I'm working inside the tank. So I do have a few openings. And honestly, I just don't want to arowana proof this tank because to do that, I would have to do a lot. So currently arowana are banned in the fish room. Who knows, maybe in the future I'll figure out an aquarium that truly is arowana safe. However, right now it's just too much of a headache trying to keep these fish contained because they're just too smart, they're too skillful, and they're just born to fly, literally. These guys love to jump, they love to fly, and I just can't provide that type of home for them. And that's the reason why I don't currently keep arowana. So everyone, let me know what you think about this video. Let me know your thoughts on the arowana fish. If you kept these fish, let me know if you had a similar experience as myself. Thank everybody that took the time to watch this video. That's gonna be all. I'll catch you guys on the next one.